I'm Joe. I'm Kevin. Six amps, all of them are about 300 watts, so that's a lot. 1800. Yeah, I don't know. It's not that, it's really that not. Is. I think we benefit from the places that we play and that yeah. they're not huge, so maybe it really makes it seem a lot louder than it probably is. I don't know. Was it, did it seem loud? Okay. Yeah. That's all. It, that's all it counts. Yeah. Do you ever have, you ever have, no, you never have any problems with, with, uh, with levels or anything like that? Or? Uh, we used to, but I think now. We just can't do it if they're not gonna, if they can't accommodate it. So we just don't get those places. We don't play those places. I can't handle. Yeah, it. if it's too loud, we usually just, if, you know, we try and make it real clear that we're gonna be real loud before we get somewhere. So, and then if it's bad, they say no. We just did these shows with Octus, which were really amazing. Um, uh, yeah, we were gonna do a split with Pelican, but that's not gonna happen anymore. We did a, um, the soundtrack for a video installation in Seattle, and that was the video was done by myself and a friend of mine uh, called Field and Stream. So. That's the latest collaboration as far as that's concerned. Tell me of the uh, visuals you're touring with tonight, mm -hmm. but I'm going to come out Yeah. Those are, um, that's part of, it's basically a remixed version of the stuff I did in Field and Stream. Uh, that's part of the installation. That was originally a two channel video, like four channel sound installation, so. Um, Lisa, my friend, while I was in New York, did like a re-edit re of it for one channel video that we could just play behind us or wherever, you know, wherever we project it while we're playing. So, uh, it's shot outside of Seattle at a Japanese garden.
played in England in at all tomorrow's parties, and then there's a chance we might go back in September. So back to the UK. Yeah, and then maybe hopefully Europe in the future. We we're supposed to, but it kind of fell apart when. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. It fell apart. <laughs> it fell apart. So, um, but yeah, we're going to go back to England hopefully in September for a week. So, Do you have to uh, change your set for going over there? Do you, or do you travel with as many? Well, we can't bring our cabinets, but we bring everything All else. The guitars you know? and pedals. And some of the amps are light enough to attempt to bring on the plane yeah. anyways. So It'll be interesting. Like, when we played there... Although apparently it sounded good, it sounded really bad to me. But um, using rented rented equipment is always going to be like a drag, bit of a hassle. Not that our stuff is that great, but it's just really like we just know what it. we want to have happen. Yeah. It's have taken a long time it. to get it that way, so predictable. It's all about it predictability <laughs> when it's not breaking. The time machines sometimes. Yeah, the time machines definitely, actually. Um, Mirror. Mirrors on. Um, uh, you know, some of that nurse with wound stuff, you know, that's, I mean, as far as like that. Then there's a lot of, uh, there's I mean, some there's Rod kinds of Stewart, Rod actually. Stewart. Journeys in the van. <laughs> uh, Slayer. Slayer. What else? I don't know what else you've been listening to lately. Um, i trying to think. Popol Vuh, I've yeah. listened to a lot of recently. I don't, I mean, it's, we've been listening to that kind of stuff for a while, I would say, as far as the drone or uh, environmental kind of yeah. stuff, it's old fun. Tangerine Dream stuff. And then there's all the, the composers, too, mm -hmm. which is a big long list, so it's not that interesting.
when we first started doing it, I think people were. It's not that I don't know if it's so much that they didn't want to listen to it as much as they were just confused or something. Or I think that people are exposed to this kind of stuff all the time. Yeah. They just don't have it maybe in the show setting that they go out to. Although that's certainly depends on what their tastes are, but. And so I think the people that aren't used to it and hear it, if if they're into that stuff, if they if they end up liking it, it's not a surprise to me because, I mean, the kind of stuff that we're playing is not. I mean, it's all around you all the time. It's in commercials. It's in you know, those kind of sounds are everywhere. record with our friend uh, Stefan Simikic and it just wasn't he's just not a well-known producer or you know, studio or anything but we did work a lot with him and like we had the benefit of a lot of time on that record because he's a friend of ours which I think we did with this new one too because we did a lot of the basic all we did all the basic tracking um, at home at home over a couple of for a period of a couple of months onto a 16 track digital recorder and then when we went to Rex's place, we just dumped everything off of that into his computer and just kind of collaged it after that. So um, I'd almost say that the new one's more self-produced than the first one, for sure. We only had so. two days in Portland with Rex Ritter, and so a lot of it was just treating the tracks, EQing it, mixing it through the board, placing things in different spots, just like making it sound more polished yeah. and more complete. It was more, mix. It was more of out. a mix, two days of mixing, right. two and a half days of mixing than two and a half days of recording. talking about today how we want to do like a eight hour record on DVD. That'd be really great. Yeah, that'd be fun. Although it would take a long time to make. But. Only eight hours. That was, it, as right. far as a lofty goal, I would say that's pretty lofty. 